letters were sent out by couriers to all the king's provinces with instruction to destroy, to kill, to annihilate all Jews, young and old, women and children. Sounds like Hamas. Understand that when Hamas committed the acts of October 7th, it wasn't a missile gone awry. Do you understand? No. It right. wasn't a military action. It was up close and personal. It was rape. It was torture. It was right. burning people alive and standing right there and watching. Do you, do you understand? Right. When you kill women and children in cold blood, up close and pers personal, there's a demonic transaction that takes place. Shalom and welcome to All Things Israel, a Shalano podcast with Ron Cantor. My name's Evan and I'm your host and I'm just so happy. Thank you for joining us today once again. We're glad to be here and to continue to talk to you and let you know what's going on in Israel and what's really happening and how things are. And it's just wonderful that you're here with us again. And we ask that if you enjoy this content, hit like, subscribe, ring the bell, let your friends know and uh, keep coming back and you can keep really uh, on the pulse your uh, thumb is it your ron the finger your thumb finger on the pulse of what's going on here in the land so hello ron how you doing today i heard you were in germany i heard you had some interesting time there yes i was in germany i was in uh, germany all last week i was wow. initially you know the israeli government has warned uh those traveling abro abroad not to <laughs> not, right particularly in europe because they said that Hamas would like to kidnap uh, Israelis. So initially, I just told people I was traveling to Europe to minister, you know, but once I was there, I felt kind of safe, you know. And so little by little, I began to, you know, Germany, uh, where was it? Nuremberg. By the way, Nuremberg. Wow. Pretty, pretty amazing city. That was like Hitler's favorite city. That's where he had a lot of his big stadium events. He was in the midst of building a, a new massive stadium i believe when the war ended when i go back there i have a woman who is a expert in uh jewish tourism because there's a lot of jewish history in that city henry kissinger uh if you remember who he was um uh was from nuremberg and he yeah. uh ended up becoming this the secretary of state of the united states of america of america so it was um it was it was a really good time. Uh, it was good to be believers. We spoke five or six times in I think five days. Wow! And it was uh, it was good. It was fruitful. I'll share more about the content because it's what I want to want to talk about today. But it's been good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Things are good over here. When you were gone, you know, in Israel, the you know the politics, the war continues, the hostages, there isn't peace, there is peace. I'm sure, you know, you know, it's uh, we continue, we keep going. Yeah, and we would just encourage everybody to keep praying for oh, the hostages to come home because it, it just feels like around the world people are forgetting it. And Anthony Blinken, the Secretary of the State of the United States of America, um, said yesterday that he cannot believe that people around the world aren't condemning Hamas. Hamas. Of course, it doesn't help when the United States did not use their veto uh, to protect us uh, on, I, I believe it was um, March 25th, which uh, sends a signal, Anthony, Tony, right. Mr. Blinken, Secretary of State, that sends a signal. It says that if America doesn't have Israel's back, why, why should we? That, that's the signal that the Biden administration sent to the world. And listen, I know we're not always the easiest you know, people to deal with, meaning you know, we have our own nation, our own concerns, our own politics, which are not always the same as the United States. But right. I believe, I have a conviction, and I've shared this for probably 30, 40 years, that one of the reasons that God made America really strong was to have Israel's back. And it is interesting, Evan, I, I don't like to play Monday morning prophet. You know, I'm much more impressed with prophets who tell me coronavirus is going to happen than telling me when it's going to end after it's happened, when right. they didn't know it was going to happen before it ha happened. So in the same way, we had many people coming out with their interpretations of why that massive container ship knocked down the Francis Scott Key Bridge. And I just, I just you know, 
listened with a grain of salt. I, it just wasn't very interesting right. to me until I saw somebody point out, uh, I think it was two days ago, uh, that that happened on March, I'm sorry, March 26th. Yeah, March 26th. And it was the day before on March 25th that the United States did not use their veto power to protect Israel. Now, don't if you're from America, don't get mad at me as like some foreigner. I'm American. I, <laughs> I got it right here. I got proof. We've got um, this is my uh, what do you call it? Inoculation thing. Ah. So I, which I could have used on my way to Uganda two years ago when I could not find it and they would not let me on the airplane. I... Um, and then, yes, I do have um, my Israeli passport and I don't mind showing you that because there's no numbers. And then I also have this little nice little fella, which is my yes, I am, a, I am an American. So I can I can speak as an American. And yes. I believe with all my heart that God raised up. America, you know, I could I can give you several issues why he made America strong. You know, one is that we are the number one supporter of world missions in, in the world. Nobody right. gives more, not only more dollars, but I think more per capita than the United States of Americans in terms and sending out missionaries with right. the gospel. But also Harry S. Truman was the first head of state to recognize the state of Israel. I believe that brought blessing on America. And so you've got on the 25th, the Biden administration, who came out so forcefully pro-Israel. Yeah, they started after, off good. Yeah, on October 7th, and uh, and then did not use their veto. And they said, ah, it's no big deal, but it was a big deal because it sent a signal to the rest of the world that America does not necessarily have Israel's back. And um, the next day, you have this... And again, I don't ever... When you're talking about judgment, you you got to do so with, if they're not tears in your eyes, it needs to be in your right. heart. You, it's it's not a joke. We we don't make light. I think six people died. It could have been a lot worse. Thank God that it wasn't. Uh, but I can go back in history. I can give you three examples right now of where my country, the United States of America, did the wrong thing in regards to Israel, and there was an immediate consequence. So... Let's go back to 1996, I believe it was. Ilana and I were in the uh, uh, Ritz-Carlton in uh, Washington, D.C. Now, you might be saying, Ron, what are you, one of these rich preachers? No, no, it was a gift from a couple that we had married, Ilana and I, or I did the ceremony, and they wanted to bless us. So, right. we, and, and we couldn't help but know, so we're... There were Arabs everywhere. And, and I'm not against Arabs. It was just a fact. I could see, and they were official. They weren't. So I finally started asking questions. And I saw um, Hanan Ashwari, if you know, know who she is. She, at the time, she was a big shot. Not so much anymore. I'm not even sure if she's still alive. I think she is. But she was one of the right hands of Yasser Arafat, mm. uh, a Christian Palestinian, Orthodox Christian. And and so I, I walked up to her. I was really crazy back then. Wow. Was, and I was like, Hanan Ashwari, can I talk to you about the middle? I wanted to get into it because I was a Zionist and I was studied right. up. And, you know, I was teaching a course on that at that time on the history of modern Israel. But we ended up with these two guys, two, two guys that were in the PLO. And, and we were we had business lounge access. So God bless those people who blessed us. Right. Um, uh, and. We were sitting down in the business lounge of the hotel with two terrorists. I mean, they were part of the PLO. And back then that was, you know, and I'm getting Ilana is she is terrified because right. I am going at it with these guys about the history of, of Israel. Anyways, I digress. Why ah. were they there? They were there because the next day Yasser Arafat would go. Uh, the, the red carpet would be rolled out at the. White House. Bill Clinton mm -hmm. invited him there, hosted him there. And that weekend there were, and, and I would consider that a, a huge mistake because right. Yasser Arafat has a merit had, he died, but not only does he have, did he have Israeli blood on his hands, but he had American blood on his hands. And to just ignore that, excuse right. that and say he's a freedom fighter. He was a terrorist responsible for blowing up 
buses and buildings and the the uh, Olympic attack in Munich in 1972, mm -hmm. where several Israelis on the on the I believe on the wrestling team were were murdered, and he brought them into the White House that weekend. Evan, devastating, deadly tornadoes hit Arkansas. Wow, who's from Arkansas? Bill Clinton Bill is Clinton. from Arkansas. Right. So again, we don't make light of the suffering, but but if you read the Bible, God is full of love, mercy, compassion. He's he's long suffering, but he does judge sometimes. And Absolutely. then another time, I would have to say, um, you know, if if you would say that President Bush's response to 9-11 in, in the weeks and days after the tragedy that was probably the, the high mark of his presidency. He was right. he was built for that day as an encourager, as a as a um almost like a pastor to the nation. But if the but if you had to point to the weakest moment in his presidency, there is a picture uh of him as president in Air Force One flying over a destroyed Louisiana uh or New Orleans after. Katrina, Hurricane mm. Katrina. And he just looks powerless. Mm. And that photo, I don't know who took it. It was official. I don't know why they right. released it, but it was probably the weakest moment of his presidency. Now, what happened? Well, right during the time that Karina hit, which I, I think it was Katrina rather, um, late uh, August uh, 2005, was when President Bush was pressuring Ariel Sharon, mm -hmm. prime minister of Israel to get all of the Jews out of Gaza for, so for 1967 to till 2005, we had about 10,000 Jews that were living in Gaza and our right. army had to protect them. It was not a great situation. Um, and, uh, but the, the, the Bush administration seeking to bring peace and I don't know, put pressure on Sharon and Sharon was for it. And, sure. and uh, they pulled these 10,000 Jews, they, they evacuated them. They became refugees. I have right. relatives through my wife who uh, had to leave and find a new place to live. And um, so literally in the southern part of Israel, you have refugees going north, right? right. At the same time, Katrina hits America and you have literally refugees in the southern part of America fleeing for their lives. Right. To get to the north and escape the hurricane. The last one I'll share. And again, we haven't even gotten to today's topic, which is <laughs> something I shared in, in, uh, Germany. in Germany. So please yeah. don't leave. Something I believe you need to hear. But the last one is uh, after President Trump was elected in 2016. In 2017, he was inaugurated. And just a few months after inauguration, he made a, a promise during his uh, campaign that he would move the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, the American right. embassy, and he would recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, which, uh, you know, most nations, I don't think any nation uh, had done up until that mm -hmm. point. There was a tremendous fear, you know, why, why you know, the, the Arab world's going to go crazy. It's going to bring on World War III. And so as it came close to the 50th anniversary of the reunification of Jerusalem, which was going to be late May 2017. Right. Uh, also, the 50th anniversary of, uh, uh, I'm sorry, 50th anniversary of the reunification of Jerusalem and the 500th anniversary, speaking of Germany, of when Martin Luther uh, posted his 95 theses on the door of the Wittenberg Church right. starting the Reformation. It's a huge, prophetically significant year, 2017. And everybody, you know, thought that Trump was going to go to Jerusalem and fulfill his campaign promise, and he he intended to. He was uh, he was going to do that, but he was talked out of it. Right. Um, and there were many political reasons not to do it, um, but he made a promise that he was going to do it, and then he did not do it. And I don't know if you folks, Nancy, I know what you're saying. If you're at home right now, you're saying, "Buddy, get out of Hang on, just. Hang on, <laughs> follow me. If you remember the summer of 2017, it was probably the worst three months for any president in the history 
uh, well, in my lifetime. Um, and it was during that time that you may have may remember Charlottesville when when there were white supremacists and ah. Antifa activists and they met in our, Charlottesville and it right. was really bad. Somebody died. Um, and then, of course, Trump's famous statement, there were good people on both sides, um, which some people will say we're taking their context. But at the moment, it, it it meant it seemed to say that, you know, you had good people on the white supremacy side, Nazi side and good people on the non Nazi side. And and uh, it just it was just a it was so bad for him. Evan, I didn't know that his if his presidency would make it to the fall. Right. Um, I don't know if folks remember. So now it's October of 2017, and uh, he can't get any legislation passed. He's been he's been president now for almost a year. He can't get any legislation passed. He said the worst summer in the history of any president in my lifetime, in in my opinion. Uh, Nixon might disagree. <laughs> I'm not sure when Nixon was was resigned. If it was during the summer or not, but he had a rough summer. Right. October is actually the 500th year anniversary of it was October 31st when uh, Luther nailed the thesis to the uh, theses to the uh, Wittenberg church door. And in October, he declared that he had changed his mind or that he was ready to recognize Jerusalem and move the embassy. And then in December, he actually gave a speech declaring, we're doing this, we're moving ahead with that. It was within two weeks of that speech, Evan. Talk about, you know, I will bless those who bless Israel. I will curse those who curse Israel. That's still in effect. That, that right. There's no expiration date on that. No. And um, two weeks after uh, President Trump, and forget what you're, this is not about President Trump. This is about Israel. It's about how the U.S., re, what happens when the U.S. blesses Israel and what happens when the U.S. doesn't bless Israel. And two weeks after he made the speech in December, he passed his first legislation, which was his tax bill, which lowered taxes and brought on unprecedented prosperity, economic prosperity for the next several years uh, until, you know, coronavirus hit. So th th those are just three examples of how when America blesses Israel, America is blessed. And when America doesn't stand with Israel, God takes that personally because yes. he's, he's given the you know, he's blessed America because of that, at least in part because of that. So absolutely. Yeah, yeah there's no doubt that uh, the hand of God is on Israel and <clears throat> uh, the nations, what, how they react towards Israel. There's no doubt that uh, there's a cause and effect, that there's a connection. Yeah. So, uh, All right. so I, yeah, I was in Germany, not sure how we get sidetracked, but I think it was imp important uh, stuff yeah. to, to talk about. But, um, you know, as I, I had a, of a pastor there named Florian first, uh, a, a good friend of mine, and I haven't been there in several years. We, we had plans to go during uh, Corona, but then Corona. And so finally, we're getting back there. You know, of course, because of the war, we didn't travel and we, we, we had plans to be with family in America. We, and we just wanted to be here in Israel. But we finally went and he set up a bunch of different meetings. And I knew. Uh, that the word of the Lord on my heart was, you know, to challenge the German church to stand with Israel. I mean, that was kind of a no brainer. You don't right. have to be a prophet to know that that is probably the word of the Lord right now. Um, yeah. Unless you're an anti-Semite, then, you know, and I, I was very sad to see, um, should I even say this? Uh, Tucker Carlson interview a Palestinian pastor who is extremely anti-Israel. As long as I have known this pastor, uh, and, and I don't, we're not friends, but I've right. been in meetings with him, extremely anti-Israel, has nothing bad to say about Hamas, has nothing, is not called, he's very prolific on Twitter, has not called for the hostages to be released, at least not that I've seen. Um, but it it's all day, every day, just Israel this, Israel that. He's in Bethlehem, by the way. Mm. He, he failed to mention uh, to Carlson that I mean, first Tucker Carlson goes to to hang out with Putin, um, right. and now he is taking a very anti-Israel stand in in this present situation. Um, I have to say, I'm not surprised, but uh, many people are, and they should be. This is 
you know, th- this is not Reagan Republicanism. This right. is something different. This is Pat Buchanan, anti-Israel isolationist politics. Anyways, just a little note about Bethlehem uh, that Tucker Carlson did not learn during his interview is that when Israel controlled Bethlehem up until from 1967 up until 1995, roughly until the Oslo Accords, uh, there was over 80, I think it was 85%, 86% Christian in mm. uh, Christian Arabs in Bethlehem. And that makes sense. It's right. it's the birthplace of Jesus. There's a tremendous Orthodox Christian community there, or there had been. And the PLO, which is Muslim, even though they're a secular uh, uh, entity, they're, they're, you know, basically Muslim. They took over in 1990, sometimes in the 1990s. And now the population went down from the 85, 86% all the way down to 15%. Wow. And I wish that uh, Tucker had asked uh, this pastor why that is, because this pastor doesn't seem to have the, again, I I would not want to be a Palestinian pastor having to stand against Hamas or the Palestinian Mm -hmm. authority, but, but don't just criticize Israel. If you're not willing to condemn killers, rapists, you know, people who, who did carry out a mini genocide on October 7th, if you can't find the courage to condemn that, then just be quiet. Yeah. Because it's just utter hypocrisy. But I wish he had told uh, Tucker Carlson about the devastation that the PLO has brought to Bethlehem and That's why right. Christians have fled this Christian. Well, Zach, I was going to say a Christian city. Right. It's actually a Jewish city, going back to King David. <laughs> and he was from there. Jacob right. buried his wife, Rachel, in Bethlehem. Very Jewish city. Jesus, the Jew, was born in Bethlehem, uh, but it became, as the Jews were exiled, and over time it became an Arab city, uh, and now it's a Muslim city, predominantly Muslim. How did we get there, Evan? <laughs> How did we get there? talking about Germany, so I felt in my ah, heart. I, I thought you were trying, I thought I was, yeah, Germany, because you yeah. were telling them about. I said something about anti-Semites. The message, and, no, yeah, but the message you were bringing to Germany. Yeah, and so. Uh, and I was very, it's it's not an easy thing to stand in a pulpit in Germany and talk about anti-Semitism because, because they know their history and they uh, don't need me to remind them right. um, of what happened, you know, during the Holocaust. And I'm very sensitive to that. I, I don't, you know, I, I the, the German church and I've been to Germany, I don't know, probably 10 times, um, maybe more. And the German church, they're just wonderful. They're loving they love Israel, the ones that I've connect, connected right. with. But I felt like the Lord was saying that he wanted them to be in the forefront Stepping of standing up. with Israel. And as I got into my third message uh, on Saturday night, it was Saturday night, I, I kept feeling this stirring in my heart to go to the book of Esther. And, um, and this is an interesting story because I did not look at any... Uh, I, I didn't even look at the scripture. I just quoted what I could from memory. Mm-hmm. And it was only the next day on a, after I was done preaching, preached Saturday night, preached twice on Sunday morning. And then Elon and I were taking a train back to Frankfurt when I began to actually look at the scripture. And then I looked at a commentary and I was shocked to find out that the commentary said exactly what prophetically I had felt the Lord had put on my heart um, the night before. Wow. So let me just, so we'll, we'll do a little teaching from Esther. And I believe this is the word of the Lord to the Christian world. So if you are a believer out there, I, I believe with all my heart, this is the word of the Lord. You test it. You, you can receive it or not receive it. But but I pray that you you will consider it, uh, and as we all should, the word Amen. of God with fear and trembling. Uh, but the, the, Esther is a very interesting story because you, you've, you've got this one guy, Mordecai, who's a big shot. He's not... He's not you know, s- small cheese. And he tells Esther, you know, hide your identity, but g- get involved in this contest. And, and move on maybe, you know, God will make you queen. She becomes queen. Right. And now Haman is, um, he is appointed, you know, more or less the prime minister, uh, kind of like Joseph was under Pharaoh. Yeah. Haman is that um, under King Ahasuerus. And Ahasuerus. Yeah, it's not an easy word to say. Hashuaris. Xerxes, Hashuaris. some say. Ah, Xerxes. Um, 
<laughs> so King Ahasuerus, he appoints Haman, and Haman goes out, and everybody's bowing down to him. I mean, Haman is a very important person, but there's yeah. one guy that won't do it, this guy, Mordecai. And when Haman saw that Mordecai uh, bowed not down, I love that language. <laughs> Let me get back to my, I'm in the, I'm in the wrong uh, version here. Bowed That's not down. ESV. There we go. Um, and now I got to find my place. Here we go. Okay. So when Haman saw that Mordecai did not bow down or pay homage to him, Haman was filled with fury. He was very upset at this. He had disdain for Mordecai. And he goes to the king and he says, you know, hey, king, there's these dudes, um, Jews, and they're they're all over your kingdom and they don't right. like your laws and they're rebellious. We We should deal with them. And so the king gives him permission to deal with it. Now, I want you to hear this. Listen to what the king's order was, because it's horrifying. Like, if you read the book of Esther, you it's very easy to just scroll through this. And right. you don't understand how, how vicious this order was. Now, before I read, let me just remind you. But the Persian Empire went from Iran. It was centered in modern-day Iran. Ding, 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 ding. Who is the, the greatest enemy of the Jewish people right now? Iran. Iran. And, and, and it went east from there to some other nations. And then it went very far west into Turkey, into Israel, into uh, Greece, Macedon Macedonia, that area. And then down into Egypt and North Africa. So it was a massive area of land. And right. pretty much, Evan, all the Jews that, that, that lived, lived in that territory. Right. So, so when, when they were saying that, you, you know, we're going to kill the Jews, it wasn't like there were Jews in America that would have been like during right. the Holocaust, there were Jews in, in right. Africa, there were Jews in, in Israel, there were Jews in America that, that weren't so concerned, but I mean, I'm sure they were concerned, but not yeah. like the Jews of Europe who, who were being, you know, killed. So, so basically he was saying he would kill, it was, you kill all the Jews, you're killing all of them. It's not right. like there's more somewhere else. Right, right, exactly. So in verse 13, it says this, letters were sent out by couriers to all the king's provinces with instruction to destroy, to kill, to annihilate all Jews. Wow. And if that wasn't enough, young and old, women and children, sounds like Hamas, women and children in one day, the 13th day of the 12th month, which is the month of Adar, which we just passed, by the way, uh, right. and we celebrated the feast of Purim, right? Uh, and or as some some people, we, Purim, we say in Hebrew, or as some people say, Purim, <laughs> Purim, Purim, <laughs> Purim, Chag Purim. Purim, the holiday Chag of Purim. Purim, and uh, and they are to plunder all the goods. So a copy Wait, so of this, this is document. This was like a one day. This was like, that was the day of, I think we talked about it the other day. It was like the movie. I did, like the purge. The purge. Okay. Everybody wow. was free to kill Jewish women, children. And by the way, I'm sure they did more than that. Like sure. once you say it's okay to murder, I, I am sure there was all kinds of sexual, sexual Rape and who knows. Yeah, or yeah. would have been. Yeah. Had, had it happened. Thank God it didn't happen. So it says a copy, verse 14, a copy. We're in chapter three, verse 14. A copy of the document was to be issued as a decree in every province by proclamation to all the couriers, I mean, to all the peoples, all the peoples. To, be, to be ready for that day. The couriers went out and hurried by order of the king, and the decree was issued in Susa, the citadel, and the king and Haman sat down to drink. But the city of Susa was thrown into confusion. So mm. what's going on there? It, it, I think the writer, who's the the, the, who, the narrator, he's trying to draw a con contrast. Like the people, even Gentiles, you know, are thinking, you know, not to mention the Jews who heard this order, but the, they're like, what? 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 Right. We're going to have a day of, of just murdering this one? Even if you didn't like Jews, that's, it's an unsettling, you know, uh, sure. order. So in contrasting that with Haman the king, what did they do? They sat down to drink some wine. Right, exactly. And um, and so as I looked at this commentary, I wanted to see, you know, what what does, you know, uh, 
some other folks smarter than me say. And and let me just say, when you write a commentary, you're you're typically supposed to say it stay in context. So then in context, it has nothing to do with Christianity. This has right. nothing to do with the Nazis. It has not, you know. Uh, so I was surprised to see this commentary um, that uh, went right there. And this is written by a guy named Mervyn Brenneman. Uh, Throughout history, many have tried to destroy the Jews. Commentary on verse 13. From the time of the Exodus to the 20th century, Christians must be careful never to support in any way the rise of anti-Semitism. Let me, let me just say this again for everyone listening, because right now, you, what, who do I support and this, and, and I'm confused, and they say this on the new, Christians must be careful never to support in any way the rise of anti-Semitism, although it has often been in the name of Christ, and it has often been in the name right. of Christ, fortunately, that such pogroms have taken place, Christians ought to be active in the fight against anti-Semitism. So I want you to understand something. I, I can always find fault in Israel. Why? We're not perfect. We, we, we're we not going to be a perfect army. Our government isn't perfect. Um, that's, that we're, we're not a holy nation any more so than any other nation. There is a favor on us. There is a blessing right. because of God, not because of us. And uh, sure, we might, you know, like we, I think, I don't know if I shared this last week, but we had this horrible thing that happened uh, a week or so ago where seven aid workers were mistakenly uh, targeted as Hamas. Right. And, and it turns out they weren't Hamas. They were aid workers and, and they died and, and it's our fault. And we have apologized right. at the highest levels. Our army has apologized and that's the fog of war and it's horrible, but understand that when Hamas committed the acts of October 7th, it wasn't a missile gone awry. Do you understand? No. It right. wasn't a military action. It was up close and personal. It was rape. It was torture. It was right. burning people alive and standing right there and watching. Do you, do you understand? It was shooting motorists as they were 20 feet away. Right. It was not something. It wasn't some guy operating a drone where it was in person. Why do I make a distinction? Because there is a distinction between military conflict and the spirit of murder. Right. When you kill women and children in cold blood, up close and personal, there's a demonic transaction that takes place. Um, just like when you commit any other horrendous sin, something demonic enters. And if you could see, if you have not watched it, you should watch it. How they celebrated on October the 7th, how yep. Hamas, it was the greatest day. There's a recording that we probably talked about here where this, this terrorist takes the phone of a woman he's just killed. He's just murdered her and her husband takes his phone, calls his parents in Gaza and begins to celebrate with them how he has killed 10 Jews with his bare hands, which he's right. I'm sure, um, uh, exaggerating right. but um and if i remember correctly his mother is happy she's she's a lady i wish i was there i yeah, wish yeah. i was there with right. you is what she said crazy right um, unbelievable. so so in this present situation as a believer you cannot support the enemies of israel remember israel's a tiny little country democracy surrounded by 22 Arab states some of whom we've signed peace agreements with right. many of whom we don't have peace agreement 50 Muslim majority nations one Jewish nation. okay so uh Mervin Brenneman says Christians must never support anti semitism must always be active in the fight against anti semitism now again anti semitism this was interesting because I had more or less prophesied this the night before uh, wasn't in my message. It wasn't in my notes, but I said, I believe God is speaking to Esther that we have to be that the, the, the church I'm Jewish here in Israel, but the church right. needs to take their stand against the Haman spirit of anti-Semitism. Mm -hmm. Now, if we go into Esther chapter four, let's keep reading verse three. And in every province, whenever the King's command is decree, his decree, wherever the king's command and his decree reached, there was great mourning among the Jews with fasting and weeping and lamenting. Many of them lay in sackcloth and ashes. Now, again, just imagine you're in 
you know, Northern Egypt, you're in, uh, maybe you're in, uh, you know, the Israel, there were still Jews in Israel. Right. Um, maybe you were in uh, Assyria, maybe you were in parts of the Persian in empire and you get this, you're, you're, you're hearing this news it, th th they are going to commit genocide against all of us, women, children, young. Oh, so there's great sackcloth and ash, but there's, there's the, the Trump card, if you will. And that mm. is, is that the King doesn't realize it, but his wife uh, she's Jewish. She's, she's Jewish. one of these people. Right. So Mordecai, you know, he, he's, he's sackcloth ashes and he's screaming in public. And, and again, Mordecai was known. Everybody knew who he was, you right. know, in, in the capital city. Um, and so, you know, people are like, Hey, Esther, um, your uncle is <laughs> kind of acting like a nut. Right. And so she, she sends word to find out what's going on. And, and, um, and then this is how he responds. And this is the, again, friends, I really believe this is the word of the Lord to the church worldwide. Listen, for 1900 years, the churches has, has had countless opportunities to stand with Israel, but has failed. Even yep. during the Holocaust, there was only a small number of Christians in Europe that like, like Casper Ten Boom, Corey Ten Boom's father, who mm. stood in line with the Jews of, of, of Harlem, of Holland. Uh, of um, Harlem in Holland, Amsterdam, and took the yellow Jewish star, went to the concentration camp and died, or right. their family that that hid Jews, or or Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who was greatly disturbed and, and took an active role in seeking to assassinate Hitler. Wow. Um, most Christians are like, well, you know, it's not really my thing. And I'm reminded of that quote from Martin Niemöller, who was also a Christian pastor, who actually met with Hitler, if I'm not mistaken, and and would not compromise. Other pastors did. They joined joined what was called the the German Christian movement, where mm. they basically Nazified Christianity. Christianity. They had swastikas in their churches. They merged Nazism with Christianity, and then you had what was called the Confessing Church, which would not. But even in the Confessing Church, not. Many of them took a bold public stand against the Nazis or defended the Jews. Nia Muller said this, first they came for the socialist and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Right. Then they came for the trade unionists, but I didn't speak out. I'm not a trade uni unionist. Then they came for the Jews and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me and there was no one left to speak That's out good. for me. Martin Nia Muller. Wow. And so I, I just believe that is so prophetic for our times because this is what Mordecai says to her as, 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 as Esther's trying to get him to chill right. and, and say, Hey, I have not been to the King in a month. And if I go to the King and he does not pardon me with the golden scepter, I'm a dead woman. Right. And here's what he says. Do not think to yourself that in the king's palace, you will escape any more than all the other Jews. That's what Nehemiah Muller is saying. Right. He's saying, don't, if you're going to just stand back why Hitler kills 6 million Jews, don't think that you're going to escape because the next to be persecuted will be believers. And um, because probably the two entities that have been persecuted, you know, over history, certainly the last 2000 years, more than anyone else are Christians and Jews. And yes. sadly, the Jewish people have been Christian, have been persecuted mostly by supposed confessing believers in Jesus. Right. Do not think that in the king's palace you will escape more than, more than uh, the other Jews. For if you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from, the, from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. And who knows, Esther? Who knows, church of the world, maybe you have come into the kingdom for it's such a time as this. And going back to Brenneman's commentary on verse uh, 15 of the previous chapter, he says, when Christians see the big, I mean, again, I just want you to understand this. I was more or less prophesying this on Saturday night. And I'm at, listen, let me, let me be clear. I'm not saying this to impress you. I'm saying this because... I am always amazed at the power and presence of God. It's it's meaningful, and this is a very sober issue that we're talking about, and, and we need believers. So 
to get confirmation that this word really was from God is meaningful to me. I hope it's meaningful to you, but please don't think that I'm I'm, I'm bragging because I I I'm, I'm like you. I see through a glass darkly. I'm just trying to work out my salvation with fear and trembling. Uh, when Christians see the beginnings of anti-Semitism, says um, Brenneman, they must realize that they must raise their voices against it for two reasons. Number one, it is anti-Semitism is against the will of God. Number two, similar persecution could fall on them. So you get that? Brenneman says there are two reasons that every Christian should lift up their voice right now against anti-Semitism. Number one, Jew hatred is against the will of God. Right. They are his people. And you say, wait, no, are, are they still his people? Romans eleven twenty nine. God's gifts and calling to Israel are irrevocable. irrevocable. Uh, 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 in, in Romans 11, the whole entire chapter is meant to say in the end times, there's going to be a revival in Israel and God has not rejected his people and you should not either. So it's irrevocable, the calling of God in Israel. And the number two, he says, similar persecution could fall on those who are silent. Right. Those who have persecuted Jews have always come to ruin. We must still take seriously God's promise to Abraham and his descendants. I will bless those who bless you. I will, and whoever curses you, I will curse and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So, you know, Evan, to, to kind of close this up, I do believe that the Lord is speaking these words right now to the church worldwide. Again, it's not because we're a perfect nation or have a perfect army. Right. It's because we have been unfairly targeted for thousands of years. 53 attempted genocides. I used to say 52, now but it's 53. now it's 53 because of what uh, they tried to do on October the 7th. You say, Ron, well, they you know, they only killed 1,200 people and kidnapped 246. Is that really genocide? Well, it was for those communities. For our border communities in the south right. of Israel, it was genocide for those towns, for those kibbutzim uh, where, um, you know, in some kibbutzim, a fourth of the people were either killed or, or, or brought into captivity. And 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 also, let's be clear, I've, I've said this before, the only reason Hamas did not complete the mission, complete genocide, killing every Jew, was lack of opportunity, you right. know, lack of uh, uh, ability. So, you know, it, Israel is being accused of genocide right now where we're defending ourselves. Um, have we gone too far? Has it been too much? I'll, I'll leave that for God to, to judge and decide. But we're responding to something that has happened against us. And Hamas hides behind, behind women and children. So if we take this number 30,000, which is a number from Hamas, right. uh, we know at least 12,000 of those are terrorists. Mm -hmm. and, and so you say, well, why are terrorists being killed along with, with, with innocent people? Because they embed themselves with terrorists. What right. they do is they say... Uh, you can kill us, but if you do, innocent people are going to die. Right. So if we if we don't, which has been our policy for 20 years, to not really respond, to barely respond, right? And that didn't work because by tolerating Hamas, they perpetrated they perpetrated uh, October the seventh. Um, so we don't want to be in war. We don't want to be in war with Gaza. We don't want to kill Arabs. We don't want to kill women or children. This no. is a response to Hamas. They're the enemy. So I want to encourage believers all over the world, stand with Israel. Bless Israel. Pray Amen. for Israel. By the way, pray for the Arabs too. Pray for revival. Pray for Hamas terrorists have dreams and visions of Jesus, of Yeshua. Pray that Amen. God would, would be merciful to all of them and pour out his spirit. Um, but do not. This is the warning of, of, of the Lord through Esther, uh, which I believe prophetically to believers. And again, we have other passages. I will bless those who bless thee. I'll curse those who curse thee. Right. There's plenty of scripture that would tell you to not turn against the Jewish people. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Um, you, you don't want to do that. And I believe, Evan, that you know this whole idea of replacement the theology the idea that God has cursed Israel, hates the Jewish people, and has removed them from his calling in place of the church, that that God is not going to tolerate this theology forever. No. And uh, and we need to be careful. So I think uh, I've said enough on that.
Amen. Well, thank you so much, Ron, for that. I think it really is. I think it's a pertinent message for this time. I just, I pray and I hope that people that are hearing this, that the Christians around the world, that it will touch the heart and they'll and they'll stand up at this time and they'll understand that not tomorrow, not next month, but this is the time where they need to take that stand. Like you said, throughout history, again and again and again, they've had the opportunity and it hasn't happened, but not tomorrow, not next month, but now that this is the time there's no doubt God has his hand on Israel. God chose Israel, not because we're better, but because he has a particular calling for us. And this is the time to stand and and not back down and support Israel. So thank you so much for that. And uh, listen, all of you, I hope you've again enjoyed. I hope this message has touched your heart. We thank you and we pray that you would continue to come and continue listening and uh, tell your friends, like, subscribe, keep in touch with us. Also make a comment, let us know what you think if you have any questions comments anything we're happy to we're here to answer your questions and to keep uh, letting you know what's going on in Israel and really the Lord's desire and calling for the land during this time and also for the church and how we are the one new man and how we work together so thanks Ron so much uh, and uh, till next time at uh, Shalano Podcast here with All Things Israel thank you and uh, we'll see you again next time Bye-bye. Bye.